I can only tell you how the journey to the Cosby Show happened through folklore that my parents told me how to answer that question when I was younger. Um, I do know that they grinded. My mom said she worked during the night and my dad took me to auditions during the day or vice versa. Every night, understanding that this is a job you can't mess up. This is not for fun, but it is fun. Make sure you respect people. Don't do this, don't do that. It was a lot of rules in place. You know, it's doing an album at five and staying in the studio until two, one o'clock in the morning and you're five years old knowing that this is the next step in your career, so suck it up and let's do it. Um, it's, you know, whoosh. <laughs> you just do what you gotta do. Honestly, I don't remember. I don't remember working with, I don't remember a scene. I don't remember anything while it's a rehearsal or a camera. I remember the smell of the soul food coming out of his dressing room. I remember this, okay, so when we opened the show uh, in front of a live studio audience, you had to walk up these stairs and we came down that classic staircase. I remember standing up there and playing with the wood before I went down. I do not remember as soon as the camera starts. Something clicks off and I do what I'm trained to do. Yeah, when I turned 18, I knew something was going on, so I started going to therapy and it's dissociation. I just black out. I turn into who I'm supposed to be when the camera's on. Um, and then I come back to when normal life resumes. Again, it's, it's bottled up. I, I mean, I still have a great relationship with Malcolm Jamal Warner and I don't even know why. I just know that I adore him. I can't really tell you the genesis of it, but I'm sure he helped me when I needed it and everyone vice versa.